Hello guys, welcome to Everything Metallurgy and welcome to day 42 of 100 days standard concepts. And today in this video, I'm going to explain, explain you about stacking faults. So basically, what are these stacking faults? So we all know that the crystal structures, say FCC, is basically a closely packed structure. So that is nothing but it has some, you know, atomic sequences, atomic stacking sequence, which is followed, which is nothing but ABC, ABC. ABC. So this is how you know the stacking sequence is arranged. Okay, so one after another. So if you arrange in this manner in a vertical sense, then you can observe an FCC crystal structure that is forming. Okay, now what actually is this stacking fault? So we call this as an atomic stacking of FCC. Now, what is stacking fault it is nothing but any fault, any defect in this particular arrangement. Okay, any particular defect or fault which is generated in this, um, you know, atomic stacking arrangement, right? So now we have two different types. So number one is intrinsic stacking faults. And number two is extrinsic stacking fault okay so basically uh, intrinsic is nothing but removal of any internal sequence so let's say i'm removing this part over here so here actually you have you should have some a but it is missing now so there is an intrinsic stacking fault formed here that means something should be there some layer should be there but it got removed whereas what is extrinsic extrinsic is uh, addition of a new layer. So let's say I have an A layer added. So some external layer, okay, you can see as an external stacking is, you know, coming in between the existing one. So this is basically called my extrinsic stacking fault. Okay, so this is actually the basic of stacking fault, which actually uh, is determining you either by adding some or by removing the existing uh, stacking sequence, right? So this is a, as an example of FCC. So basically, uh, let's consider an intrinsic semi, uh, sorry, an intrinsic stacking fault will basically give you a faulted region, okay, which will be, let's say here my A is removed, right? So if all the A atoms, A layers are removed, I'll get something like this, correct? Which is nothing but an HCP sequence. So what actually happens is because actually there will be a dislocation formed over here because of the removal of this. So this particular dislocation over here, as you can see, um, there will be many dislocation networks that are formed and basically you see an extended dislocation forming. So let's say I have an XCC crystal structure and because of this, let's say this is B1 bar, it is split into some dislocations B2 bar and B3 bar. And this is my faulted region which is bound by these dislocations. So which are called my partial dislocations. Partial dislocations. And this is my faulted region. Okay, so as I just said, in the case of FCC, it gives you a HCP region. So because of the intrinsic stacking faults which are formed here, you can see that the faulted region is basically of HCP character. Okay. So this is what basically you find. Now, as you can see, uh, these are actually separated with some width, which we call width of the faulted region. Now, how that is basically explained so for that case, what you should know is basically what is a dislocation dislocation is nothing but an extra row of atom which we have right so there will be a repulsion between these dislocations which is basically you know balanced or you can say counterbalanced by the surface tension of the atoms okay so why repulsive forces will be there so repulsion will be there due to the electronic structure right the electron clouds and all between the atoms and the surface tension will be there due to the surface of the atoms so these surface tensions are basically nothing but the attractive forces correct and the other are the repulsive forces and at some instant at some distance you can uh, call it an equilibrium distance or an equilibrium separation 
okay equilibrium is at well that is state of rest so this surface tension or this attractive force that is prevailing between you know in the system is called my stacking fault energy right so this stacking fault energy is something which is allowing my dislocation so as i said these are partial dislocation this hole is called my extended dislocation okay so the extended dislocation is in its minimum energy position or it is thermodynamically stable with some equilibrium separation between the two partial dislocations so we call it as a stacking fault energy and as i said this is nothing but this can be seen as an attractive force between the partials now what if i have high stacking fault energy so if i have high stacking fault energy i can always say that the width of the so let me say this is the width of the fault region so i always have low width correct why because if i have higher stacking fault energy it means that the attractive force between them is more it is dominating so the equilibrium separation will be less so that is nothing but the width of the fault region is less so in the other way you can also say low sfe will give you high width so to conclude i can write sfe is inversely proportional to the width of the faulted region okay so this is an important outcome that you must know and again based on this uh, let's take the same example so if i have high sfe i have low width so if i have low width the overall extended dislocation can easily move that means it can easily cross slip so because of that easy cross slip you can say that there will be less strain hardening in the material or in the other way if you see if you take a material with low sfe you have very high something like this okay so the width of the faulted region is high so this dislocation is very much difficult to cross slip so this itself is acting as an obstacle for other dislocations which is helping in rapid strain hardening okay so i hope uh, this video helped you to understand the basic concepts of uh, stacking faults and the faulted region okay so yeah that's it for this video if you like this video please hit the like button and also share with all your gate metallurgy aspirants and your friends so that they can learn from our free videos right we have been working hard to you know provide you with some crisp content so please do like it and also subscribe to our channel so make it 4000 as soon as possible right thanks for watching guys also check out our website everythingmetallurgy.com where you can find one of the most important and you know one of the best made video course for gate metallurgy and also one of the most affordable test series with about 60 tests right so please do check out everythingmetallurgy.com thank you guys thanks for watching meet you tomorrow with one more interesting concept thank you